I've done a number of videos of late about Class D amplifiers and it's proved to be somewhat controversial and insofar as I've had more personal emails on, on the video itself than any other videos. In fact, one, one guy said that I was bashing Class D um, because I don't like Chinese or something odd like that. He didn't like the fact that I said that this 300 watt amplifier only gives 55 watts per channel. And uh, that uh, why am I being so patronizing towards these Chinese makers? I have to say, I'm, I'm sure people that know me by now, um, I'm not knocking any product. I'm simply buying one. I'm not being sponsored by anybody. And I measure it and listen to it. And I tell you what the results are. Now, if you want to believe that you're getting 300 watts, well, that's fine. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. And if you're happy with what you purchase, again, I don't have any issues with that. At least when I'm saying it's 55 watts, I will prove it to you. So many other reviewers that I've seen on there take it out of the box and they've got it free from the manufacturer and they connect it to some really crap pair of speakers and, and blast it and say, oh, this is brilliant, 300 watts, when it's fantasy. Anyway, that's enough of the rant. I've, I've done a couple of videos on this particular board and I did say I was going to come back and actually give you some figures and show you what it's capable of doing. It all boils down to the fact at the end of the day, as I'll be able to show you in a minute, it does not like 48 volts. Just before we go down to the bench, I do have to make an apology. I've made a mistake. On the first video about this particular board, I said that it gave 90 watts in to 8 ohms. This is incorrect. It doesn't actually give 90 watts into any, watt, into any ohms at all. And I will show you this presently. 90 watts isn't going to happen. I don't know where that figure came from, but... Uh, it doesn't give 90 watts. So let's have a look and see what it does do. The meter at the moment is set to the 30 volt range and that will be this scale here that says 3. The scope is not calibrated and it's purely to display clipping. I'm using a times 10 probe so ignore any numbers that you have on here. We're feeding in 1 kilohertz and as you can see from the meter, I've got it set to 48 volts, which is the recommended voltage for this particular module. Load is 8 ohms. What I'm going to do initially, I'm only driving one channel, by the way, because with sine wave testing, whilst it will give you the powers that I'm going to give you, it will cut out because it will overheat. So I'm only driving one channel. Now we're going to wind up the power and just before it goes into protect mode, I will read off the power. Uh, this is voltage at the moment. 15 volts, 16 volts, 17 volts and already we've gone into uh, that 17 volts. And if I leave it on or go up anymore, we will go into complete protection mode. Like that. 17 volts into 8 ohms is actually 36 watts. Clearly, it does not like 48 volts. And I haven't even tried this into 4 ohms yet. But that's 36 watts. If you cut the voltage down, Let's do this. Let's cut it down to 36 volts, which is a number often given by some of these boards. Now, normally when you lower the voltage, the maximum power goes down. Let's do the same test again. So everything is the same. 
except we're now running it from 36 volts. So we'll wind up the power. And already we've exceeded what we had before. We've now got 17 volts. There's no protection lights on. So let's wind it up a bit more. I'm trying to look at everything in one go. Now you can see on the scope, it's just got a touch of the fuzzies, which is very common in these amplifiers. So let's look at the power there. And that's actually near as damn it, 20 volts is 50 watts. So by lowering the voltage, we've actually got more power, which is crazy and doesn't make sense other than the fact the chip does not like 48 volts. Now let's go up a little bit to 38 volts. And I haven't tested this myself, so it'll be as new to me as it is to you. So let's see now, that's where we were with 20 volts coming out. Let's see what happens if we go any higher. There's the fuzzies. And it's gone in to protect. But that was at 20, 1, 2, 3, 24 volts. That's 72 watts. Interesting, we've got to recycle this again now. So it looks really like about 36 volts seems to be the sweet spot. See, that's showing signs of current limiting by these furry bits on there. But let's go up until we actually do clip. Well, there is the start of clipping. And that's 21, 22, 23 volts, which is 66 watts not an un, an unrealistic power i mean that's the sort of power i would expect from something like this apologies for the sound of the fan because i've had to put the fan on my load resistor because into four ohms they're getting a bit toasty so we're still on 34 volts and we will see what we get and the clip light's gone out already and it's now shut down. Now, what I'm going to have to do is to recycle this and measure it quickly because it doesn't like four ohms. And we've got 13.5 volts into four ohms, which is just over 45 watts. Clearly, this amplifier is not very happy into 4 ohms. This is a simple square wave at 1 kilohertz into 8 ohms. And look at the overshoot on that. I have no idea why it's like that. But here's something even more interesting. Look what happens when I switch to 4 ohms. That's now 4 ohms. And that doesn't look too bad, does it? This amplifier is just wrong in so many ways. This is basically talking about the output filters. And again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the output filter is only correct on these low priced amplifiers at least at one frequency and here they have again customized it to be accurate at six ohms in other words it's inaccurate for eight ohm speakers and four ohm speakers first of all into eight ohms these numbers all go up in level and they are half a dB up at 13 kilohertz, 1 dB up at 18 kilohertz, and 2 dB up at 37 kilohertz, which is unusually high for a um, Class D amplifier. But the reverse is true into 4 ohms, and they are half a dB down 
at 13k, which is exactly the same frequency that it was up on into 8 ohms. And 1 dB down at 19k and 2 dB down at 28k. The low end is excellent. It's half dB figures is 4 hertz. So you can effectively say the low end is flat. Some conclusions about this particular amplifier board. Now, as you can see, if you've watched other of my videos on these Class D amplifiers, the quality and figures you get varies dramatically. And by far, the only one that I've been impressed with so far is that supposedly 600 watt bridged amplifier with the two fans on. If you haven't seen that video, you, you ought to look at it because it's actually a very good Class D amplifier and um, one that I find I would actually recommend to you good folks. But these low cost ones, and they vary, there's about half a dozen of them on the market. Now, admittedly, I've only tested two, but the first two, one blew up and the second one gives power much like this. But this one has issues with the current protection and overload. Now, whether it's they're all like that or just my sample, I don't know. But out of three out of three so far, all three are faulty or way out of spec. The only one that's been any good is that big one with the fans on. I, I, there's no proper numbers, so I can't say it's the D5 or whatever, because all this stuff is generic and there's no proper manufacturer, although there's half a dozen brand names. Well, it doesn't like four ohms. And when you're listening to it on music, if the level's reasonably moderate to low, it operates fine. Why it has an issue with square waves at 8 ohms, I have no idea. I don't know whether it's just this particular board, but it does show on all these boards there is a complete lack of quality control and clearly they've not been tested. Other than maybe they put a, a power supply to it and if it doesn't blow up it passes. But at this price, to be honest, they're not going to be sitting down at the bench because just doing this video here, which is going to run for about 12 or 14 minutes, I spent three hours on this. So clearly <laughs> they're not going to do that, are they? I can understand your dilemma on these things because on paper they look like God's gift to the industry, don't they? But clearly I think the chip if you're lucky enough to get a genuine one and and the circuitry built around it is okay you could be on to a little winner and certainly that um, big bridge model that i've that i've shown you is really pretty good um whether it's i don't think it's as good as something like the l12 but as long as you don't think you're going to be getting all these megawatts of power you're simply not and and it looks like all of them so far don't really like 48 volts they really don't the previous one that blew up was because of the regulator chip wasn't specified properly or faulty or, or fake or all of those things they're virtually impossible to repair unlike if you buy say an l12 or MX50. The MX50 is a brilliant little amplifier and so cheap and yet it performs much better than these things. So if you just if you just want to have an amplifier that will give you 30 to 50 watts on a good day these are okay and so they, they sound fairly good why they sound fairly good, I don't know, because they don't measure fairly good. Why that one rings, I just don't know. And I don't really care, to be honest.